Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Rabbit Law Miles Australia. Um, today we're going to take yet another video uh, on uh, the Luba 2 series, uh, installing the, uh, the the charging station outside of uh, GNSS view or outside of the satellite signal. Um, we've been still getting a lot of questions about this. Um, a lot of people around the world um, are struggling to get this to work. Uh, here in Australia we don't seem to have too much trouble with it, it seems to work relatively okay. Um, uh, but the more and more I test it, the more and more you can sort of see there are certain situations that actually do stop the, uh, the robot from coming out uh, the following day. So what I've done is for the last two weeks I've actually had this set up here like this, so we've put a little ramp up here into, the, into, the, into a tin shed. Um, with the robot sitting in the back that you can see there, so the robot's about three, three and a half meters, maybe four meters from actual from getting satellite signal. Even at this location where I'm standing right now, the satellite signal's not great. Uh, there's a lot of trees and a lot of buildings around us. Um, so basically, I've had this running, uh, like I said, almost for two weeks. Uh, every single day, it comes out, no problems at all. We have we've had very, very few issues, um, other than on two occasions uh, we've had. Uh, where it actually didn't come out and I'll go through exactly why or why, why I think that is um, and also manually starting it uh, the following day quite often brings up a an outside of area outside of area e error so we'll go through that as well uh, very briefly um, but firstly so this it's actually in the morning now uh, on a Sunday morning here and uh, the robot hasn't gone out since yesterday so all I've done is come out here and set the camera up so you can actually see exactly what, what actually happened so I'll bring the app up here on, on the screen here so you'll see up on the very top top middle there uh, this, the, the camera icon is actually is, is showing um, and the uh, underneath that icon it's got zero zero meters so it's it's re the camera's reset from going dark overnight and then during the and then in the morning it's reset back to zero so when this robot starts it'll allocate itself five meters to be able to get out into the area uh, and start mowing if your situation um, sort of shows that it says 25 meters um, that generally means that you've got some some satellite signal at the charging station and at some point it was actually able to to actually position itself on the charging station and then it will reset back to zero back sorry it'll reset to 25 meters um, and then if it loses satellite signal um, again and it goes dark and goes, goes light again it will then reset back to zero uh, but as long as it stays light it'll stay at 25 meters if it gets a position on there so before we get a little bit too far into it um, the uh, this is a bit of an assumption but the, really the reason why this function actually does work or why it's, why it's even enabled it's not really there to design to actually have the robot you know, parked underneath, um, you know, or inside sheds or in the back of your garage, whatever it might be. I believe the functionality has been put there just for the robot to be able to get itself from a charging station when the charging station's up against a wall, so it's got poor GNSS signal. Um, and then obviously the robot's able to leave that, that, that position, get five metres away from the charging station, pick up a decent GNS signal and, and continue on. I really don't believe it's actually been built for this functionality that, we're, that, that I'm demonstrating here. Um, but look, it does work. Um, you've just got to be prepared that you know, occasionally the robot just may not go out and you may have to bring the robot out into the into GNS signal and put it back again. But I haven't had to do that in two weeks and I'll show you exactly why. Um, very quickly, I'll just click on the on the camera icon there to show you what the, uh, what the what the setup what the signal is here at the moment. So even inside the tin shed there, the robot is seeing seven or eight satellites. It's just flicking between seven and eight there at the moment. Um, but we've got zero co viewing, and the signal quality for the robot there is very very weak, which is exactly what I would expect. I wouldn't expect it to be. In fact, I'm surprised it's getting any satellites whatsoever. Um, and more importantly, um, the positioning status at the top there says float. So if that positioning status, as soon as it's uh, outside of GNS sig a, a signal, um, you'll either get a float or a, a, or a status that says single. Um, so basically meaning that it either doesn't have enough satellites or the, or the uh, signal quality of those satellites is too weak. Um, so that's generally what you'll see while it's in there. Now if, the, oh, sorry, sorry down, down the bottom there you've also got the, uh, the 3D vision status saying fine and the brightness is fine. Now, if where you've got the charging station is installed it doesn't say fine for the brightness um, and the vision status well then there's no possible way this is going to work because it has to have 
a good a good visual status for the uh, for the camera so it has to be in a, a reasonably bright area and look the shed behind me is not exactly that bright it's just it's just enough light for, to get to get it operational so i will go through here now on the front screen here if i was just to press the play button here which i'll do right now it comes up there ask for a height and we press start mowing it'll actually do it self check um, and that's ready to go so if i hit that now it, it'll it'll happily take off from right right where it is in manual status what I have found that on most mornings, this is not just some mornings, this really is most mornings, um, if you do that, it actually comes up with an outside of area error. And it says it basically says it's outside of the, the mowing area or outside of its zone. Now, I believe, and this, again, this is all just, just my guesswork here at the moment, and I'll try and verify this with, with a motion R&D team at some point. And the, when the robot actually docks itself back here and it hasn't got its, its positioning, um, it's assuming that its position is based on on the uh, on the RMU and the camera vision that actually where it gets back. So it's calculating where its position is, but that calculation is also referenced back to the reference station that might be sending correction data. That let's just, for instance, let's just say the correction data was one meter out at that point in time. Uh, whereas the following morning or later on in the afternoon, whenever it might be. Um, the positioning of that correction data coming from the antenna might be three meters out uh, basically being a two meter difference uh, in those two settings the robot is still sitting in a position where it thinks it's only one meter out um, if the if the reference station then sends a signal through saying it's three meters out i believe and again this is assumption it's just my guesswork um, is that the robot now even though it's on the charging station it's referencing itself two meters to the side um, and therefore outside of its base station of its charging station area um, and outside of the mowing area so I believe that's what's happening and it only affects if you want to try and manual mow by hitting that play button what I've found is that even when it does that and it comes up with an error saying it's outside of all outside of the border and I might be able to f find one here if we're lucky no they're all past they're all past now so um, yeah, so if you press play, I quite often get an outside of border error. But if I go into to the actual task, so just beside the play button, you'll see that I've got a task for, for Sunday at 7 a.m., um, which is turned off at the moment, which is why it hasn't come out. And, um, if I press on that, um, and then I'll press on task four at the top there, um, and then I can just go run now, and the robot will happily come out and start working. Okay, I'll bring up the, uh, the status here while it comes out. And so you can see, that everything's fine there at the moment it's still only got six satellites 10 satellites 14 satellites 17 satellites we're still in a single status Stop working. and the robot has stopped working however it got a, it got a fix there just after it stopped working it got a fix and now it's now it's continued on and it's actually and it started working again no problems at all so we'll go back there and i'll just pause that and we'll send that home I'm sure we'll end the task. And now I'll send it home. Start so, basically, it really doesn't have too many issues working. Now, I'll go through what I found um, when it actually didn't work. So, I said on two occasions in the last two weeks, this has happened, um, where in the morning, the obviously it's got no satellite so there's no position like the top there where it's got its where it's, where it's saying it's got its position there um it clearly didn't have that position see the camera see it's already actually lost its position now starting to um, before it heads back heads back into the shed so we do have really poor gns signal just here but yeah so where it's sitting there now with the, with the camera vision up so that camera vision and the meter marks they obviously go away when when, you, when it gets dark and I'll demonstrate that in a second here and I'll close the doors behind me but then in the morning it didn't reset to zero now I honestly don't exactly know why that is I've actually tried this over a two day period and kept the, kept the doors closed to keep it dark for a longer period of time and it still worked perfectly okay so I haven't been able to actually replicate why the, uh, why the reset camera um, distance actually worked there so let me just close the door here So you'll see now uh, in a few seconds. There we go. So the uh, so the uh, the camera position's now gone away. So it's got no GNS signal. It's got no camera position. 
and it does that obviously all night um, while it's dark or when it, however, however long it's dark for. And then in the morning when it comes back on again, it, uh, it comes back up with the, with the two zeros against the, against the top there um, and basically just resets itself so it can get that five meters again. Now that's worked almost all the time. However, on two occasions, um, we've had it where it just did it, it just stayed exactly where it is right now. It, ha it actually hasn't reset whatsoever. Now, I really don't know why that is. I haven't, I haven't been able to replicate it. Um, but what does seem to work is just literally covering over the camera and, and then bringing it, so basically, basically making it dark again and then making it light again. So if I open this up again now, within a few, within a few seconds, there we go, it's already back already. Um, it brings up the zero zero meters and that robot's now happy. It, it's, it's now perfectly okay to go out and, and, start, wor and start working again. So off he goes and and off he goes again so it doesn't seem to have really too many issues doing it but when it doesn't reset um, it seems to be to do with the camera now and it basically to do with something something with the camera actually timing out whether that's to do with like I said before with the GNS signal being inaccurate uh, at the time um, and then the camera being timed out for a period of I'm really not sure but there are occasions where the robot just it doesn't reset and it just doesn't go out and start working again. So that's really the only thing that can catch people out is that if it's uh, if it doesn't reset back to zero when the light comes on when when it be, when it comes becomes light again, then the robot just simply doesn't go out. Now, if that's a time-based thing, uh, and I believe it might be to do with the time, some combination between time. Um, and uh, I think that's the actual the correction data coming from the ant from the antenna. Um, so hopefully, with a few yeah, with a, with an update or two from uh, from a motion uh, while it's on the charging station, it won't actually be referencing any of that data coming from the reference station. Hopefully, because uh, I believe that might be what's actually happening. But if it does stay on the charger and doesn't go back out again, it really is a simple case of just making it dark and back light again. So possibly the next day, which I haven't actually tested that by the way, um, I haven't left it there for the, for the following day to see if it actually resets for the, for the, for the next day. Um, but it probably would, it probably would do that. So um, Luger's gone and picked up a leaf if you can hear that in the background. Um, let me just stop that. The other thing that uh, that I have found is that yeah, that Luba also still needs to calibrate itself um, when it comes to getting that position back out in GNSS signal. So if it does get all the way to the five metre mark um, and stops without calibrating, without getting a GNSS signal, um, it does struggle to start going again. So I'll, I'll re replicate that for you here, and I'll, uh, and I'll and I'll show you a couple of tests. Okay, so I've obviously put Luba back on the charger. Um, I've closed the doors and reopened the doors so it uh, reset back to zero. Put the app up here again so you can see. Uh, we're sitting on zero meters here. Now what I've also done is on the back of Luba I've put some tin foil over the back so that it actually can't pick up satellite signal even once it gets out here. Um, and what you'll see is that the robot comes out to its five meter mark, stops and actually stops working. We can then take the, uh, the foil off and as long as it's got good GNS signal, eventually after about sort of 10 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, um, Luba starts continuing on again. So let's just start start Luba up. So I don't really care about what the what the schedule is. Just wanted to, just wanted to come out. So he's going to come out here. He'll come right out to the five meter mark, uh, and he'll stop. Now it pays to have satellite signal just a little just that little bit earlier um, because while it's traveling, it can actually pick up and it can fix its position much better. Uh, so I said it'll come right through to here somewhere, I'm not sure, it goes to about here somewhere I think um, before it'll actually come up with a stop, so you can see on that, so there we go, 0.4, so now it stops, so notifications come through you know, poor positioning, bad positioning, all that sort of stuff and if we open up the positioning system there, we can come in there, you can see its, it's status is single um, it's got 9 or 10 satellites um, and everything's weak, so we'll take the, uh, take the foil off, oh, nearly fell over <laughs> Um, and you obviously you'll start and then and, and Lou is off and continues working as soon as it's got a fix um, It's off working again. No problems at all. So That's generally what you're going to see guys um, when it comes to Luba um, Working or having the charging station installed uh, back in the garage here Okay guys, um, I've moved myself back in the shed here because it's a little bit breezy today So I'm not quite sure how the mic's picking up the wind 
Um, hopefully that sort of clarifies to people. Like I said, we're still getting a lot of questions about this. Uh, a lot of people around the world that are not actually getting it to work. Um, uh, realistically, the only thing you absolutely require is light so the camera can actually work. You require the camera icon, uh, just on the app again, it's, uh, it's sitting at 23 metres at the moment because we haven't, it hasn't gone dark and gone light again. So if the camera icon doesn't come back on again with a metre with a meter mark underneath it, then the robot's not going to leave the charging station. Um, and then once it gets to that 5 metre mark, it needs to have good GNSS signal um, so it can actually get a fixed location and then continue on. If it gets to that 5 metres and stops and still stays in float or single, uh, as a positioning status, uh, then it really comes down to you getting better, get a better GNSS signal at that location. Now, like I've sort of said on a fair few videos, we're pretty lucky here in Australia. We've got lots of satellites uh, above us all the time, um, so there's a lot of places around the world uh, that have a lot less satellites uh, than what we have here. So. Depending on how, like I said, you just need to have really good positioning where the robot actually comes out to that five metre mark and hopefully you get it at about three or four metres so the robot can travel for two or three metres um, whilst getting GNSC signal and it should get itself a fix rather quickly and then off it will go. Um, oh, with the issue of it not going out and that camera, the meterage under the camera not coming up, um, if anyone actually has more of an idea than I do about what really what what situation caused that or you can replicate that uh, Please put a comment below because I'd really really like to know um, Like I said, I've tried to replicate it about four or five different ways and I have not been able to get it to happen So it's definitely I'm quite convinced it's got something to do with it with the correction data coming from the RTK uh, base station um, and it's basically with that that correction data being yeah, significantly different from when it docked to when it's actually, yeah, to when it wants to go out. I think that has something to do with it. Um, but the reason why that camera, why the meterage on the camera shuts off and then doesn't come back is a bit of a mystery to me. So, outside of that, um, hopefully I've sort of shown enough to show you guys exactly what I see and exactly what what happens for us here in Australia. Um, and like I said, if you've got any uh, any questions or you've got uh, anything else to say to, to, to let me know, then put some comments below. I'm uh, always happy to hear from people who've got uh, other experiences. Um, uh, like always guys, um, yeah, if you've got questions about Luber or any other robot blower, throw comments below, more than happy to, uh, to respond to you guys. Um, if you're in Australia, you know, send us emails and contact us uh, at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Uh, check out our website at www.robotlawnmowers.com.au uh, and check out our socials, Facebook, Instagram and uh, TikTok. See you on the next one.